This is the Thank You Ocean Report. Marine protected areas are special places designated to help protect and restore marine life and habitats in the ocean. In California, there are close to 130 MPAs that span the coastline from the Oregon to the Mexican borders. Monitoring of these marine protected areas is currently being conducted statewide. This podcast focuses on monitoring in the Central Coast region. The teams conducting this monitoring include scientists, volunteer divers, fishermen, local citizens, and the results they're sharing lay an important foundation for ongoing successful management of these extraordinary resources. Actually, this information adds up to the most detailed picture yet created of ocean conditions across California's central coast region. Liz Whiteman is the program director for the California Ocean Science Trust, and she's also the director of the Marine Protected Area Monitoring Enterprise. She says if you take all the information gathered together, it underscores that these marine protected areas are on track. Within the first five years of monitoring, we've seen some species demonstrate early changes. In kelp forests, for example, fish species like cabazon, lingcod, as well as some rockfishes, have increased in both numbers and sizes inside of the marine protected areas. This is encouraging because these species are among the economically important species in the region. Looking beyond the habitats and the marine life to the socioeconomics, the local economy of the central coast, we were able to see that fishing remains an an integral part of the ocean economy. Liz tells me that for some fishermen, there have been impacts, possibly because they lost traditional grounds for fishing or have to travel further to fish, which increases their operating costs. But if we look across the region as a whole, the fishing industry has shown resilience and has responded or adapted, in part by broadening to include activities such as whale watching or working with scientists to collect data and become a part of the monitoring effort. And the Central Coast baseline results are being shared in an innovative way. You can find them at oceanspaces.org in a digital ebook format. Now, this format allows you to start with something that looks like a book, a summary report, but to then click around and dive deeper in the website into interactive graphs, videos, raw data. The report is designed to be easily accessible and provide a richer understanding of the results. And what's an example of how we might look at this information? If you're interested perhaps in the commercial fisheries of the central coast, um, maybe spot prawn or market squid, you can click to the ebook on ocean spaces and find additional graphs that detail the revenues from those different fisheries. You can even sort of toggle on and off the ports and the revenues that come into those different ports, as well as look at different time spans, different years for the data. In addition, you'll find slideshows and videos from the monitoring teams who were out in the field for the last five years gathering this important data. Looking forward and beyond ocean spaces for a moment, we always and and continue to work closely with the Department of Fish and Wildlife to find out how we can share the information specifically with them in a way that can be useful for their ongoing management of the marine protected areas. And we're looking forward to working with the department to present the results together to the Fish and Game Commission, the agency who has statutory responsibility for making decisions about the MPAs. We want the commissioners to have this information as they adaptively manage this regional network. And why is it so important to make this information available to as many people as possible? It's important that everyone have access to this information because Well, we believe that smart decisions for our oceans are science-informed decisions. In California, we have a really diverse community of participants who are involved in, in public policy and who are interested in the management of the MPAs. So these results and this scientific information can form part of a shared body of knowledge that becomes the basis for everybody's participation in ocean resource management and and stewardship looking forward. I asked Liz how she and her colleagues are going to maintain a successful monitoring program. Ongoing monitoring is essential, and it's essential to do a couple of different things. 
to evaluate the performance of the MPA network over time, whether the MPAs are achieving their goals, and then to continue to inform adaptive management and decisions that are made about the MPA network. But in addition to the science results that serve as that foundation for an ongoing monitoring program, what emerged from the last five years is more than that. It's local communities that are engaged with their marine protected areas, with new partnerships and new collaborations. You know, we believe this is really the path forward. And she says that path includes academic institutions working right alongside citizen scientists, fishing communities, and state and federal agencies. Sort of all poised together to form those new partnerships, those new collaborations, and work together to create monitoring that is efficient and cost-effective as well. And Liz tells me there are many ways for you to get involved in these MPAs. I'd recommend Ocean Spaces as a place to start. On oceanspaces.org, we have an interactive map. So you can browse around and find out if there's an MPA near you if you're on the coast. And find out perhaps about opportunities to go kayaking, diving, or or recreational fishing. Ocean Spaces also has information about how to get involved as a volunteer or a a citizen scientist. And you might think of oceanspaces.org as a starting point. There you'll find many interesting and varied organizations, such as Reef Check, MPA Watch, the Collaborative Fisheries Program. And through these programs, you can contribute to the monitoring efforts in your area. You can also add your perspective through a blog you write, a video, and you can post research. You will definitely find people interested in ocean health and a common interest in MPAs. My thanks to Liz Whiteman of the California Ocean Science Trust. Remember the ocean takes care of us. Let's return the favor. To learn more about these MPAs, you can visit our website, thankyouocean.org. I'm Jerry Kay.